here we are. Look how gorgeous, dude. But this is what dreams are made of, y'all. Yo! What up, y'all, and welcome back to another one. Season's coming, and your boy has a lot of prep to do. We got decoys to put away, get ready, rebag. We got a ton of decoys, full bodies in there that need to be unbagged and cleaned. But today, we're gonna be doing some deer prep, some dove prep, uh, some duck prep. I really wanna take you guys out to the cornhole. You know, you all seen the cornhole video. I want to take you out there. I haven't been out there. Me and my family just got back from Hawaii uh, for 12 days, yeah. So I'm ready to go out there, check it to see if the millet's coming up. But really quickly, August 22nd, August 22nd, a massive, the beginning of the season, ducks drop, y'all. These are old products, a bunch of new products hitting the website. Don't miss it, guys. August 22nd, when you go over there and purchase something using code BOB, which you save some money when you use my code BOB, B-O-B, B-O-B. Use it every single time at checkout all year long. You will be entered to win if you buy something August 22nd using my code. A two-man dove hunt here at the lodge. Me and G-Wagon, old Gerald, will be running dove hunts here two or three days, your choice. Uh, the, the limit of dove here is 15, which is probably that across the nation, I would assume. But we have a ton of dove. I'm going to go out checking dove spots today. We're going to do some deer corning. But nonetheless, August 22nd, go purchase something. I'll be having a Bobby Guy, first ever Bobby Guy Pro Model Duck and Goose Call hitting the, the website, guys. I'm extremely excited to show you all this. First time ever. Uh, you guys are going to love it. I don't know if it's going to be available August 22nd, but it may. But a lot of other new products will be available August 22nd. Purchase something. Get entered to win the two-man dove hunt. Let's get deer, dove, duck prepping. All righty, y'all. Let's get our hands dirty. First off, we have to take care of a close deer spot. That means new corn uh since we were in uh hawaii for actually it was 11 days which was a very long time the deer demolished the corn this spot we're going to it has about right now i would say uh, four good bucks one being a shooter that's for sure the bucks right now, they're in bachelor groups. They're not chasing tail, you know what I mean, chasing that white tail. Uh, they're in bachelor groups still uh, in velvet. And uh, this one spot is actually behind my house. I've kept it corned, I don't know, ever since we moved in, four, four plus years. Uh, never shot one off of it, but this might be the year. This might be the year. We have some deer clients coming in and there's one back here. He's probably 160, I would guess. Right there, right there. Not huge, but really nice deer for somebody. Let's load up some more corn and we're gonna get after it here. Also, it took so many pictures of deer eating my corn that the battery went dead and the SD card's full. So, we have about, total we have, Total between Gerald and I, deer spots, deer spots with cell cams. Y'all know what I'm talking about probably, I would hope so. Uh, we have about 12 to 15 cell cams out on deer spots, so it's non-stop maintenance. Non-stop maintenance. The deer do not quit eating. And yes, we have raccoon problems. And yes, the does probably eat a lot more of the corn than the bucks because there's a ton of does and a ton of babies but you got to keep those does around uh or they, you just got to keep them homed basically keep them around so when rut comes they pull them big boys to your spot so if you're uh if this is your first year deer hunting and you're experiencing kind of the same thing you got to keep feeding them doe you got to keep them around so when rut comes they pull the big boys to you there's our camera. Boy, howdy, look at that. They have demolished the corn. Oh, 
Look how trampled down the spot is now. That's awesome. Love to see it. Love to freaking see it. All right, we need to do some camera maintenance right here. Come on, guys. I'm going to put you guys on hold. It's going to take a minute. Okay, I am going to resort to and try these cheap batteries. These are Dura Start. These are only like ten dollars for uh, i don't know how many you get here it's the big pack how many's in this 24 batteries uh we've been using the energizer they are like 20 dollars for 24 of them and let me tell you they go dead really really uh, sorry no they don't go dead fast they, <laughs> the energizer ones they're just so expensive that with all these deer you tend what are we doing here what's happening you tend to get a ton of pictures green lights on uh so many pictures in fact you just you go through them and the problem is at twenty dollars every i don't know probably two weeks having 12 to 15 cameras out gets insanely insanely expensive so we're gonna give the cheapies a try here and see if there's much difference wish us luck <laughs> that's a good idea all my deer hunters out there if you have found a cheaper battery that lasts and that is you know comparable to duracell or energizer please drop a comment down below I don't care if it's on Amazon, where it is. Now, with the Tacticams, you can put on a solar panel. They're pretty pricey. I don't really want to spend all the money to outfit 12 to 15 other cameras with them. I know you got to pre-charge them. I've tried them before and didn't have much luck. Drop a comment down there. Let me know if you have any tips, any secrets, anything helpful. Uh, with battery usage for the Tacticam Reveal. I have the new ones, I have the 2.0s, the 3.0s, so thank y'all. All right, now the fun part. Throw out the kern. Let's do her tour. Not very exciting, but maybe some of y'all have never done this. Maybe your state doesn't allow you to do this, but Kansas, in fact, you can bait for deer. You can bait for turkey and deer. You cannot bait for waterfowl. Very illegal. I would not do that if I was you. We're gonna throw the old batteries in the trash bag. Pick up all of our trash. We're gonna throw out probably two bags. Two bags will do it for now. But when I throw out corn, I like to put it in a big, whitish line right in front of the camera. Spread it out real good. Don't put it in one big pile, y'all. Don't do that. Because then it tends to disappear faster. Okay. That's all she wrote here. Looking good. Next spot. Ooh. Ugh. That's not good. <laughs> uh oh. Well, I just pulled up to the cornhole, the mallard cornhole. If y'all haven't seen it, you'll see it here in a bit. We're here. But unfortunately, we can't go in right now. The irrigation system is right over, directly over the pond right now, spraying watering the kern the kern so we're gonna have to uh we'll go feed another deer spot real quick check on it uh, a doe hit the camera and tilted the camera so it needs some maintenance needs some batteries and then hopefully in an hour we'll come back and the pivot has moved on but look at this we got dove all over the lines all the corners the dry land corners on the pivots all the corn is ready to be cut like now when i left for uh, hawaii it was still really green 
and uh, when we were gone it was over 100 degrees every single day and it fried it so it's looking like dove opener september 1 we will in fact have a bunch of cut uh corners to get after them dove let's head to a deer spot and come on back Alrighty then, next deer spot, here we are. Let's check it out. Now this spot, y'all, uh, it has not been producing a lot. Uh, we have a lot of does here. We have a handful of raccoons. As far as bucks go, they got some weird genetics here. Very odd genetics. They're all small spikes and they're really odd deformed looking spikes um i made this spot probably uh, two to three weeks ago and it's just not getting hit nearly as much still a good amount of corn on the ground we're gonna probably throw two bags out but they've trampled it down pretty good the camera like i told you a doe walked up here and messed up the camera pretty good. So we're gonna reposition that girl. There we go. And we have to put new batteries in her because she's dead. Easy peasy, throw it on the ground. Now we do have, I know a lot of you are, have probably already dropped a comment down there. Or you're asking yourself or wondering, Bob, why aren't you guys using deer feeders? We do, we do. Just on certain spots like this one, this is a brand new spot. Uh, I've never, I've never deer hunted this spot. I've never corned this spot on any previous year. So instead of investing $500 in a feeder and yada, 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 and putting in a lot of money, we just want to throw down some corn with a camera to see what's in the area. And with the amount of does, like I was saying earlier, that are coming to it, I think it'll produce. I think that this is a good traveling spot, a highway per se to where if we keep the does here, we'll have a really good chance of getting a monster or just a good shooter in here come rut. So stick to the game plan, trust in your process, and it'll pay off. I'm gonna do the old battery trick and corn trick, nothing to see here. I know you're probably like, Bob, you got your white kicks on, your joggers. Hey, your boy's got to hit the gym after I'm done corning, y'all. Gym, four to five minimum, five to six days a week, baby. Up until season comes, at least. bigger a little taller look at this the pond's still over there the pivot's on i don't know if you can see the pivot head right there spraying we might get a little wet <laughs> look at this we got some rain when we were gone the corn is flooded all the way the heck out here i'm assuming that would mean the pond has gotten a lot bigger <laughs> this will be exciting to see what's happened Corn's looking good though, really good. Um, lots of corn planted in the right areas this year. Um, a lot of our good lease fields planted to corn. Some of our ponds like this one right in the middle of the corn. It's gonna be epic. Big shout out before we get there uh, to the pond here. Big shout out to uh, all of you folks that have booked a hunt recently in the last couple weeks. While I was in uh, Hawaii, my phone was absolutely blowing up. Y'all were filling out the booking form constantly. Um, booked a lot of people when I was in Hawaii. Excited to have you all here. If you guys are interested, if you've been talking about it with the family, with the boys, the, your corporate group, your business buddies, guys, you 
got to get a hold of me like ASAP because we are in fact filling up pretty rapidly. Um, it's awesome. Awesome. We're going to have more clients this, this year than we ever had any other pre previous year. And uh, the crew is ready to rip and roar, baby. Boom. I'm pumped. Yesterday it was uh, temperature didn't get over 70. It was in like mid 60s, lower 60s. Today it's in the 70s. Here we are. Look how gorgeous, dude. Yeah, it's definitely a lot more flooded. That's what I'm talking about. Pivot is up and roaring. A lot more water in here. Holy mackerel. You talk about mallard heaven, y'all. I don't know if y'all have ever hunted ducks and flooded corn like this but this is what dreams are made of y'all I'm, I'm not exaggerating this is phenomenal oh man yeah look how big it is now holy moly oh boy look at that Ooh, about went over my boot She's real full. Way fuller than the first time we came. Look at that. Look at that. This is duck freaking central. It's pretty small, pretty small. I'm gonna guess um, probably an acre and a half of water here. Uh, but when he cuts this, see, the corners, the non-irrigated corners are ready. The irrigated side is not ready. By the time he cuts this, I would say here soon, he's gonna shut this pivot off. And when he does that, he's gonna shut it off. He's gonna let all the irrigated stuff die uh, because it will be in fact done growing and let it die. So it gets like this to where he can cut it. And if this water stays where it's at, he's not going to be able to harvest a lot of this around the water. We're going to see how it pans out. I'm excited. No millet popping up. Looks like the water actually came up right after. There's a few sproutlings over there. But the water definitely came up pretty quickly after I planted it. So <coughs> this looks gorgeous, y'all. See some green trying. It's trying. Just not much going on yet as far as the millet. A lot more water in here. Wonder when he's gonna shut the pivot off. I'm gonna have to call him and ask. Boy, am I excited about this. Well, that's gonna do it for today's prep work. Here we are at the lodge. We got some special guests coming in today to uh, to stay in the lodge. And I better fire up the old AC for him. Um, Cole Townsend, you know my brother Cole. He's coming in uh, with his girlfriend, and then old Whitey. Y'all have met Whitey before. Um, old Whitey, he's the best. He is a hoot. Uh, them boys are gonna come stay a day or two here on their way north uh, to go hunt North Dakota honkers. I have been kicking around the idea of going up uh, to North Dakota around maybe the 20th, 22nd, 23rd time range to go maybe for a couple days, uh, maybe fly up, fly back. We just, me and my family just got back from, from Hawaii, okay? We were there for 11 days, which was amazing big shout out to chris thank you for hooking us up you know who you are um it was amazing the flight home was not that amazing uh our international airport is located in wichita which is about 45 minutes from me and the home here home base and it's not a very large airport which in return results into having to fly somewhere in BFE to get there. We left Hawaii Friday at 1 p.m., which, mind you, there's a five-hour difference from where we were in Hawaii to here, okay? So, five, so let's just say minus five hours right off the top. We left there at 1 p.m. 
We had three different flights. We flew from Hawaii to Los Angeles. We only had like a 30 minute layover there, which was nice. A four hour flight going straight over home to Chicago. Yeah, we had a four and a half hour flight, or sorry, four hour flight there, four and a half hour layover in Chicago, some delays, and then a two and a half hour flight home. We didn't get home, so we left at Friday at 1 p.m. We didn't get into my truck in the parking lot of the airport in Wichita until noon yesterday. So 19 hours of traveling. I'm done. I'm done. So back to, back to what I was saying. I don't know if I want to leave home yet. I don't know if I want to leave home. But if you guys want to see me go north with old Cole Joseph and do some honker hunting early, early season here coming up here. It's going to be firing up. I haven't been in a few years. The last time I went, I took my son Bodie and we had a ball. We didn't shoot very many birds, but it was fun. If you guys want to see me do it, drop a comment down below. I'll collect the comments. I'll tally them up and that'll help me decide if I go or not. You tell me. But the lodge, oh, look at the old Fred painting. That is a painting. Yeah. Big shout out to McKinley, Bragg, Greg, McKinley. Thank you. Awesome. She's actually probably going to enter that painting in the, into the Ducks Unlimited contest. But here we are, little shot of the lodge. She's kicking, ready to start firing up here. A lot of y'all that have booked are gonna be showing up for dove, duck, goose, deer, spring turkey, baby. If you're entered in spring, or if you're interested in spring turkey, we have a lot of availability. And uh, the spring turkey hunting here is quite amazing. Just fill out the booking form, I'll get a hold of you. Uh, Gerald will probably call you too, give you all the information, the date availability. It's extremely affordable. Uh, it'll be three days of hunting as well. Our turkey population has been going bananas the past few couple years. It is up and it is good. But like I was saying, ducks waterfowl, August 22nd, massive gear drop, all new gear, all new gear, all new calls. Hopefully my Bobby Guy Pro Model duck call will be up and available. You guys are gonna love it. I love it, it is freaking sweet. Uh, use code Bob to save yourself some jack, some cash, some savings at checkout at duckswaterfowl.com. You can use that code anytime for Christmas presents, for duck calls, for gear, anytime, any time of the year. Uh, but if you buy, if you purchase on August 22nd, it enters you to win a two-man dove hunt this September coming up in just a few weeks to come here to the lodge for two or three days, your choice, come dove hunting with me and old Gerald. Again, you have to purchase on August 22nd, the day all the new gear drops. So there'll be an assortment of items for you to go through that you've never seen. I'm excited for y'all to see it. Thank you all for being here, but until next time.